up, party people? I'm Marie Forleo, and for over 20 years, I have been obsessed with learning what it takes to turn dreams into reality. You know, I started my company back in the day with no clue, no connections, no money, and over time, grew it into something spectacular. I created the award-winning show, Marie TV, was named by Oprah as a thought leader for the next generation, and wrote the instant number one New York Times bestseller, Everything is Figure Outable. I've helped millions of people transform their businesses and lives. And guess what? Every week, I'm going to help you take action and make the difference you were born to make. But please do not expect anything about this podcast to be traditional. We've got songs, weird sound effects, the occasional F-bombs, maybe some fart jokes if you're lucky, and anything else that makes me laugh. It's all fair game because this is the Marie Forleo Podcast. Hey there. So the sound quality of today's episode may be a little different than normal because I don't have my normal equipment, but I did want to connect with you today because this moment and this conversation is so important. It's important to me personally, and I believe it's important to the future of our world. I think we all recognize that this is a truly historic moment. It's a moment filled with incredible pain and also incredible possibility. The horrific murders of George Floyd and Ahmed Arbery and Breonna Taylor and Tatiana Jefferson and countless others have shattered our collective hearts. Here in the U.S. and around the world, what's happening is we're finally starting to have real and uncomfortable and necessary conversations about racism about the pervasive and destructive nature of structural disparities and the inequalities that are baked into our institutions and everyday life. And we're finally starting to talk openly about how racism and injustice has been devastating marginalized communities, specifically black communities and communities of color for far too long. Over these past two weeks, I've been having a lot of really incredible conversations. Specifically, I've been talking with Black friends. I've been talking with Black members on Team Forleo. I've been having conversations with Black B-schoolers and B-schoolers of color and connecting with people on Instagram. And oh my goodness, it is an eye-opening and a heart-opening and a humbling experience. I've always known that we have an incredibly diverse audience. And to be honest, I actually thought I was doing a pretty good job of being inclusive and being a force for equality and justice and and elevating voices, especially the voices of people of color. But one of the many things I've learned in recent weeks is that the efforts I've made up until this point are not enough, like not even close. And I'm just beginning to see how much more I can do and how much more I must do from this moment on. Seeing your blind spots is a really humbling experience. And I realize that for me, I'm in the beginning stages of seeing a lot of new things. I am listening and learning and taking more effective action. And already I am noticing a shift in myself. For years, I've been talking about the power of focusing on progress, not perfection, right? We say that all the time on the show, and that is exactly what I'm doing right now. I am in full on, anti-racist student mode. I am listening, I'm watching, I'm absorbing so much material right now as it relates to history and anti-blackness and the intricate and complex web of racism and how it is in every piece of our world. So today's podcast, I just want to be transparent with you. I just want to share a little bit about the blind spots that I've come to see in myself, the ways that I'm addressing them. And my only hope is that it might be helpful to you. But before I keep going, I want to make something crystal clear. I am in humble student mode right now. Okay. So no way, any kind of expert on this, like baby steps. There are thousands of brilliant scholars and authors and activists and trainers out there and specifically members of the black community and other communities of color who have been writing and teaching and training on these subjects for years. So those are the people we need to listen to and support right now with both our attention and our money. And another thing, I know this might sound odd, but again, I'm just sharing in the spirit of transparency, all of this learning 
And all of this unlearning has me feeling more hopeful and more motivated maybe than I've ever been in a really long time. Uh, This is a major awakening. It's a turning point, I believe, both for myself personally and I'm hopeful for us collectively. Everything I'm learning at this moment is transforming the way that I hope to lead and run our business, the way that we create and share content across all of our platforms, how we develop our products and programs. I mean, everything. And so right now there are really three primary areas of focus for me, and I want to share those with you. So the first area of focus is education. And I'm talking about listening, really listening to black voices and people of color and getting education for myself personally, and then education and training for my team. But for right now, I just want to focus on my personal education. I have stacks of books loaded in my Kindle. I have an ever-growing list of videos and talks that I'm watching online. I'm waking up early, I'm staying up late, and I'm taking notes right and left. So right now, I'm reading the New York Times bestseller, How to Be an Anti-Racist by Dr. Ibram Kendi. So I like to highlight things. That's what I do in all my books. And I want to share just a few Kindle highlights. They are quotes from this book. So here we go. And I quote, Denial is the heartbeat of racism, beating across ideologies, races, and nations. Here's the next quote. But there is no neutrality in the racism struggle. The opposite of racist isn't not racist. It's anti-racist. What's the difference? One either allows racial inequities to persevere as a racist or confronts racial inequalities as an anti-racist. There is no in-between safe space of not racist. The claim of not racist neutrality is a mask for racism. That passage really hit me. And then I have one last quote again. I told you I have a lot of highlights, so it was hard to pick just a few. Uh, But this is one more quote uh, from the book. We are surrounded by racial inequity, as visible as the law, as hidden as our private thoughts. The question for each of us is, what side of history will we stand on? End quote. That one brought um, tears to my eyes. So I also just finished another book that's called White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo, which um, if you're a white person listening to this right now and you haven't read that book, I would highly recommend reading it. Here are a few of my highlights um, and quotes from White Fragility. Again, these are not my words. These are quotes that I really found moving. Here we go. Quote, the dimensions of racism benefiting white people are usually invisible to whites. White supremacy in this context does not refer to individual white people and their individual intentions and actions, but to an overarching political, economic, and social system of domination. Powerful. Here's another statement. Again, this is a quote from the book. Racism is a structure, not an event. That one hit me in the heart. And then I have one more quote. Again, this is from White Fragility. Here we go. A racism-free upbringing is not possible because racism is a social system embedded in the culture and its institutions. We are born into this system and have no say in whether we will be affected by it, end quote. Okay, so now we're back to me, Marie. And uh, again, as I said, I'm learning and reading and absorbing so much right now. And I think one of my biggest takeaways in this moment is this. It's just the fact that all of us are born into a racist culture, and this does not make us intrinsically bad people. We didn't choose the system, but we do have to take responsibility for changing it because the system that we're all living in, it is destructive, it is unjust, it is unfair, and it is deadly. And I think that denying that we live in a racist culture or that we have unconsciously absorbed racist ideas and lenses and biases, all it does is keep the system in place. Here's something else I'm learning. This is specifically for me as a white person. I'm learning that anti-blackness is so utterly pervasive that most of us can't see it exists, especially in ourselves. And when we're willing to see it, it's uncomfortable. At least it was really uncomfortable for me 
It cracks open a whole range of emotions like anger and denial and defensiveness. And for most people, right, those emotions, they can be intense and they can make us shut down and pull back and check out, which actually does nothing but keep the whole dysfunctional racist system in place. So for me, what I'm learning is we can't check out, right? We have to run in and we have to run towards that discomfort. We have to be uncomfortable. My friend Ra Goddess calls it sustained discomfort. And that discomfort is necessary and required over the long term if we have any shot, and I believe we do, to dismantle racism and create a better world. And why do we need to do this? Because a common thread that I'm hearing across a wide number of conversations with the black community, as well as other people of color is this, they are exhausted and exasperated because their cries for centuries have been ignored. And so I believe it is time for all of us to take a stand, to come together and to do some serious good work over the long term. So that's the first area of focus. Now, my second area of focus is business. So companies, including my own, must recognize that Black people, Indigenous people, and people of color cannot separate their race from their business or their work lives or any other aspect of their lives. Right now, my company, we're going through a complete overhaul of our management, our leadership, our hiring practices, all so that we can better recognize biases and so that all people but especially black people, people of color, members of the LGBTQIA plus community, people with disabilities, so that everybody feels safe and welcomed, valued and respected on our team. My goal ever since I started the business was to create the best workplace that I possibly could. And now I need to raise the bar on that goal and do better than we've ever done before. So here's something that I'll share that might be helpful. I think it's a great time just to get curious about your organization, whatever that might be, just to ask the questions. How can we do a better job when it comes to equity, when it comes to creating a safe and inclusive working environment? What is it, if anything, about how we do business that needs to change? So I think these are just two questions that we can start imagining into, start journaling about, start talking about, start having conversations about, and then whatever insights start to surface, put them into action. So for example, on our team, we are heavily investing so that our internal team is trained to know how to actively combat and interrupt racism. We're reshaping our workplace so that equality is extending through every single piece of the brand, through our team, our messaging, everything we create and everything we put out into the world. Why are we doing that? Because I believe how you do one thing is how you do everything. And for my whole life, I've wanted to play some part in helping to create a more fair and equal and just world. And I think that this moment is teaching me that I am seeing so many ways, so many better ways that I can do that practically in my day-to-day work. I really want my values and my heart to be expressed and aligned on every level of our mission. And our goal right now is to have integrity on every level of what we create. Now, of course, these changes, they're not going to happen overnight, but our team is already in action and we are 100% committed for the long term. Now, the third area of focus is on sustainability. So what do I mean by sustainability? So in this context, it means recognizing that large scale change, both for me personally as a human being and for our company, as well as I think society at large, this is really a marathon and not a sprint. So on the micro and the macro level, we can't just do the work, right? And claim victory and then be done with it and move on. We cannot unpack deep-seated and unconscious racism and undo injustice and discrimination in a weekend or in several weekends or even in a few months. That is not how this is going to work. This is a forever journey. For me, I now know that dismantling my own biases and learning how to be an anti-racist is going to be a journey I will be on for the rest of my life, and I am 100% in for it. And given the fact that this is true, given the fact that we must be in this for the long haul, I think it also means that we have to 
pace ourselves because I know this from the other areas of my life that burnout and exhaustion is real. I know for me that if I am not strong and well in myself, that I am less effective as a change maker and as a human. So that's something that I'm looking at deeply as well. Um, We want to look at how, as we're making all these changes in our company, how do we keep our energy up and our focus up and our commitment up over the long term? And I don't have all the answers to those questions at this moment, but that's a little bit about what I'm exploring. And speaking of that, speaking of being in it for the long term and avoiding burnout and really being able to thread that needle, our company is actually about to go on our annual pre-scheduled two-week summer break. We do this every single summer. We do it every winter where we close the company for two weeks. So everybody who works here can actually take a step back, reflect, recharge, spend time with family, and just gain a new perspective, which I think is so important right now because 2020 is turning out to be one heck of a year. So if you listen to this podcast regularly, know that we will be back after our two-week break. And uh, before that, if you're interested at all, we're going to be compiling a list of internal resources, anti-racist books and videos and other things that we've been collecting and sharing internally on our team. So if you want access to that when it comes out, just hop on our email list at marieforleo.com slash subscribe, and we'll be sending it out next Tuesday. And now, of course, you do not have to wait for that list, right? There is the Google. You can just Google anti-racist books and movies and action resources because there are tons of excellent lists being shared right now. And with that, I say thank you so much for listening to the Marie Forleo podcast today. I'm looking forward to learning more and sharing more and talking about all of the changes that we can and must make as we move forward together. If you enjoyed this episode, screenshot it, tag me at Marie Forleo and share it on social. Even better, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. It would really mean the world to me. And it would help our team know what you're enjoying most so we can give you more of it. Thank you again and stay on your game and keep going for your dreams because the world really does need that very special gift that only you have. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time. Marie, look, nothing in life is that complicated. You can do whatever you set your mind to. If you roll up your sleeves, you get in there and you do it. Everything is figure outable. I was still a little girl when my mom said those three words to me. I had no idea how much they changed my life. Eventually, that simple phrase helped me end a physically abusive relationship get out of piles of debt and land every job I've ever had, from bartending to trading on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, to publishing at Condé Nast, to becoming one of the world's first Nike elite dance athletes, to starting a business at 23 and building it into a multi-million dollar socially conscious education and media company from the ground up. Now look, I don't know what your dreams are, but I do know this. They are 100% figure outable. If you want help on your journey, get yourself a copy of my number one New York Times bestselling book, Everything is Figure Outable. Now, one big thing do not just read the book, I need you to do the book because if you do, it will change your life. Learn more at everythingisfigureoutable.com or head to your favorite place to buy books or audiobooks now. <laughs>